Jungle! His work exploded! Welcome back to Duck Duck Go Talk with the very best in low cost cosplay and props. I made my grenade bracers this way because I don't feel 100% confident in working with complete EVA foam as a lot of other tutorials out there use. And also because I feel like this saves me a lot of time and money versus working with, again, just EVA foam or even Warbella or any other material I could track down. Supplies! Two cheese puff containers from Walmart. These ones, not like the slightly smaller ones, the big ones, they have a purple lid and it's covered up right now, but you can see they say cheese puffs. Um, I don't actually like cheese puffs, but I like the containers, they're great, and you're gonna need two of them. Unless you mess up, and then, like me, you're gonna need like four. <laughs> EVA floor mat. I think I used about six of these total, and I had leftover ones, and I didn't always cut exactly efficiently, so you could probably get away with using less than six. So at Walmart, you can buy these in big packs for fairly cheap, you can buy them at Target. I believe it's a four pack for 25, or if you wanna be really cheap, and if you have one near you, you can buy them at five below for three dollars a mat. Make sure you're painting and doing all your stuff on the smooth side. Okay, you're also gonna need the really thin EVA craft foam. You can get like a sheet that's about this big, for like 99 cents in the arts and crafts section. Okay, for spray paint colors, so you're gonna need black and matte, army green and matte, and then I chose a very shiny silvery spray. And then you're also going to need Plasti Dip. Make sure you coat everything in Plasti Dip before you actually spray paint anything. I did use some googly eyes, they're very small, not hard, hard to see. You can get a whole pack of them for like a dollar, and there's like 125 or something. You could get away with not using them, but I did use them. You're also gonna need a heat gun. Please, please be safe when you're using this. <laughs> Always make sure to unplug it when you're done, just in case. Contact cement. So that is your adhesive. Um, some spots you can obviously see. I used hot glue because I was in a rush and hot glue is my go-to glue, but contact cement. But when you're using contact cement, please wear a mask. Please be safe. Don't get it on your skin. Don't throw it at your friend. Don't spill it all over stuff. Be careful with contact cement. Be careful when you're applying it, when you're opening the, and closing the container, and when you're storing the container because it is flammable. Fun fact. Get an X-Acto knife where you know where you can buy replacement blades because I kind of ran into the problem where I didn't know where I could buy replacement blades my knife, sandpaper to kind of smooth out some spots that the heat gun didn't quite get to, or, the, or that I cut really jaggedly. Um, I don't remember what grid I got. I got like a multi-pack from Walmart, and it worked really well. Okay, phase one. So this is gonna be the planning phase, and there is a lot to cover in this, so please stick around with me. Okay, so for every piece you see, other than the um, cheese puff container, I have a paper version. So, I call these um, the green things, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> I looked up like the anatomy of a grenade and I could not find it. So I'm calling them like ridges or bumps or notches. So if I say something about that, these are what I'm referring to. This goes here and it also is the same thing that's down here. There are one, two, three, four, five, six of these on the bottom and there should be one, two, three, four up top. I made lots of extras because I get worried that they were going to fall off. None of them fell off so that was nice. Then you have these ones, which are pretty simple. They're here, they're here, they're here, they're everywhere. There should be, I believe, 12 of them. You can see how far spaced out there. This is my uh, model. This is one I did not cut up or use. I used it so that I knew how far everything was spaced. And then I transferred that over here. The spacing around this section did get a little bit messed up. Um, as you can see, it's a bit uneven over here. So the first silver piece, this um, spot where your hand's gonna be coming through, this is my practice piece right here. It just kind of lays on there and then it has to cut out. Okay, the next silver piece is going to be the cut down, which kind of goes down and then it comes up. So that's that piece. It is the same thickness as the first top piece, but obviously it's slightly longer and more angular. Okay, so the next silver piece is down here. Your elbow is going to come up through here and it just kind of rests here. See? Um, measure your arm and then you can kind of know the dimensions of how you want it. Mine is a bit bigger because I planned on wearing thicker um, sleeves and gloves. Here is the armhole. It is measured off of how big this one is. And then it, yep, it's right like that. And then the pin, which is the bigger silver piece, this is one where it's more difficult to use papers and you can see I've kind of cut mine together. Um, Mine does stick out more than it should, obviously. It's supposed to come down a bit more, but um, I was worried <laughs> that it was gonna mess up. So make sure your, yours comes down a bit more, and this is a bit closer over here. There is this black piece in the center. That is this one right here, and it is gonna be 
the center of the circle. Um, when you cut in, then you're going to kind of know how big it is. Um, again, it's about the circumference of my arm, except it's a little bit bigger because my gloves are big and thick. Phase two, tracing, cutting, and then sanding. So when you're working with EVA foam, you have your pattern. I would suggest pinning it on here so it doesn't move around, and then I'd suggest using like a silver Sharpie or any bright color. It'll stand out against the black so that you can make sure you know where your pattern is. And then when it comes to cutting, cut away from yourself. <laughs> Very careful and make sure you're coming down at like a straight down angle. Also, while you're cutting, make sure there's something underneath this, like um, a board or some newspapers or cardboard so you're not cutting directly down into like your desk, your floor, yourself. When you're cutting into your cheese puff container, trace it out and very carefully cut in. This can be a bit difficult to cut into, so make sure you're going at a nice pace. Don't get frustrated. If it takes a little bit while, that's okay. Just be careful, because this can also get sharp and that can also cut you, or you can cut yourself. One very difficult part of working with the cheese puff containers, I will admit, is cutting into the bottom layer and cutting into the lip. The lip, I just eventually, I think I ended up using my Dremel to kind of saw down in here and then I could go in and cut, but the bottom, was quite tricky. So what I had to do is I took scissors or I took my drill again. I put a hole in here and then very, very carefully took my heat gun and I heated that section. I only heated the section I had traced out of my arm and once it was heated and very soft I cut in and I cut out the section. So this is what the section will look like when you pull it out and as you can see I drilled in and I started to cut, 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 cut. It was very very nerve-wracking, I'll admit, but um, just please be careful if you are going to try and do it this way because obviously, as you can see, you can actually heat too much and you can warp the side of your container, which made me want to die a little bit inside <laughs> after I had finished cutting everything else out. But then it was nice because I could see how wide I need to make this inner piece. So that worked out. Okay, when it comes to sanding, um, not every piece needs sanding, but some pieces will need them just like around the edges or Maybe you didn't quite cut quite in a straight line, so you want to sand that down a little bit. Didn't really matter to me what grid I used. I know some people get funny about it, but I got a multi-pack, which came with a variety. I cannot take credit for all my sanding. Um, my friends Dexter and Tiz, um, they helped me with a lot of sanding, because I had like a thousand different cosplays to work on that weekend, and it was really stressful. Phase three, heating and heat shaping. So, as you can see, this is a bit curved. So, your pieces, when you have your on EVA mat, they're not going to be um, curved, they're going to be flat. So, when you heat seal, what it's, it's hard to explain, but you can tell, they, they change. You just have to watch it. When you're heat shaping this, what I did is I heat up my little pieces. So every piece that was a ridge or a notch, however you want to say, I heated them and then I'd hold them on here so they make sure they held the right shape. And then it only takes a few seconds for them to hold their shape and then they'd be done. When you're heat sealing it, why you want to do this is so that it doesn't just absorb all your paint and that you can work with them better. When you have these pieces, you want them to be flat. So what I did was I had them on the floor and then I put heavy flat objects on top of them so that they would be flat, flat, flat. Phase four, painting. Okay, so before you paint anything, after you have your heat sealed and heat shaped little ridges, plasti dip them, okay? This doesn't take too long. I think all my stuff got about Two coats, a um, couple places probably could have used another coat. And after that, you can get on to painting. I have all my stuff in different sections. That way, like, if there was like a bit of a breeze, the silver paint would end up in the green paint. Didn't take too long. So again, with colors. So all the little notches and stuff, they get green. Your cheese puff containers, they're gonna get black. And then the other thing that's gonna be black is the centerpiece in here. And then after that, this is silver, this is silver, and these right here are silver. I don't honestly remember how many coats I gave these. Sometimes you just gotta eyeball it and make sure it's getting enough. Phase five, gluing and attaching. Okay, so this is my order of how I attached everything on here. And again, I suggest using contact cement. Um, I used a lot of hot glue because I was nervous about using contact cement, but I've used it a lot more now, and I can say it's, it's real easy to use. Just make sure you let it get tacky before you attach it to anything. Black piece. This wrist piece right here, the dip down silver, the up top silver, bottom silver right here, the lever, and then I added all my little ridges. I believe I started from this side, and then I went this side, and then I did my inner ones. Okay, so when you're gluing your ridges on, make sure you're spacing them out 
how you want, which is why I have my little map. So you can go in, you can put a piece of painter's tape down, you may put a little X there so you know that's what you're gonna cover. Okay, so one thing I did kind of add that I didn't bring up earlier was this piece right here. Um, this is all one piece, it goes all the way down, and this is just a thin piece of craft foam covering it up. This is black craft foam that I just cut in a circle. And then my Google guys are here, kind of like um, the hinge that would move the lever. It's meant to kind of mimic that and look like it. And then there's just a thin piece of craft foam that kind of wraps around it. It's not rocket science, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, you don't have to do it, I think it adds a nice little touch. And that is everything you need to know for the Walmart Bakugo Grenade Bracer. Thank you for sticking around. The next uh, two videos are also going to be over Bakugo, they're going to be on the rest of the cosplay. But I will see you later. Quack, 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 quack,